very particular in uh, mentioning laws and numbers. And what struck me was that he could quantify that the states are at 61.45 percentage of implementation. Uh, so our next speaker is uh, Dr. Javed Khoshid. Uh, and he'll shine some light on the challenges and approaches of implementing CWC in Pakistan. And you have heard some comments already in forms of in form of question in, during the last session. So I request you to uh, try and wind up your discussion within 14 to 15, uh, 14 minutes, ideally, uh, okay. so that we can uh, finish the session. Thank you. I will try. I will try my best. It is always difficult to speak after so many learned speakers. But my main emphasis will be how to implement uh, this and further improve its implementation in Pakistan and what steps we can take to build in this implementation method uh, in our country. Well, uh, it's already said, what is the Chemical Weapon Convention? It is uh, a, we a convention which uh, uh, 192 member states are there, fundamen fundamental treaty to mitigate the storage and production, and also uh, there are 25 articles, three and actors to it, and uh, OPC has done a lot of work. Now, if we see in this slide, there are two things very important that CWC wants a world free of chemical weapons, and second, chemistry for peaceful purposes, responsible chemistry. So what we want to do, we don't want to stop the chemistry and we want to stop the chemical weapons. So we have to do these two things simultaneously and how we can build up for that. Uh, what we have done up till now, uh, if you see there are uh, nearly this chemical weapon convention has been applied and 90% of the chemical weapons have been destroyed and 100% declared facili uh, facilities have been inactivated. But if you see how many countries have signed for it uh, initially, uh, which were the possessors of the chemical weapons, they were US, six countries. And out of six countries, uh, in South Korea, Albania, and Libya, the chemical weapons have been, uh, storage have been destroyed, but you see U.S., Russia, and India. India uh, has agreed to destroy completely its chemical weapon up to 2021, and U.S. and Russia 2023. Second, first is the, they, there should be no chemical weapons. Second, to ensure that chemical weapons do not return. So I am dividing the chemical weapon control regime into two portions. First, destroying the all chemical weapons and second, not to uh, allow other countries to produce them. Next one. Pakistan signed the CWC, they already said, but I will be discussing the Article 7 and Article 11 of the Chemical Weapons Convention. The Article 7 is National Implementation Measures and Article 11 is economic, Economical and Technological Development. So. We, the world do not want to stop the economical and technical development, but they want to restrict the chemical weapons. Uh, so, how we can do it? Let's see how we can do it. Next one. So, in according to the state parties, uh, the state parties is liable uh, to uh, do the appropriate legal assistance and facilitate implementation of the obligation of CWC. Thanks, one. Okay, so I was really concerned about the two points. Ensuring that chemical weapons do not return, first thing. Second, prevention of the emergence of the chemical weapons. First thing is true for those possessor states. And second is true for those like countries like Pakistan, that we should ensure that chemical weapons do not appear. So how we can do it? Uh, first, there are two steps. One is administrative and second is technical. If we see the administrative steps, we have already, already been 
made a convention or a, an ordinance in 2000 by Ministry of Finance, uh, Foreign Affairs and a national authority to implement that. Second, Export Control Laws Act in 2004 has been made. Third, we are in the adoption of internal compliance programs of UN 1540. So we have already made three, four concrete steps to avoid to implement the Chemical Weapon Convention in the administrative uh, as an administrative control. Now, what we are doing as a technical control? National Authority 1997 has been made, and it is in contact with the national organizations and other national stakeholders. Like third, so in technical uh, sense and technical measures we have to take, like Pakistan remains fully commit committed to the objectives of Chemical Weapon Convention, Pakistan continues support its effective implementation, as we have already mentioned that Pakistan is identified as one of the six countries in Asia for establishment of regional assistant and uh, production center. Second, we have a chemical protection research laboratory in Desto which is doing uh, the research and making some instruments as already been mentioned by Dr. Uh, Afzal uh, in his uh, uh, lecture. Second, third, what technical measures can we take? We should ensure a national production program ensuring the safety of our people, protecting the environment, enhancing the national cap capacity, which is very important what I am saying. Capacity through academia, research, courses, seminars and workshops, and also with the effective communication with the industry. Next one. So, research and academia in institutes along with focal point can play a part. So in academia, uh, we can take the administrative matters and the technical matters. Administrative to form a committees in all academic institutes that can overlook or can see how the research and what type of research is going on, what type of projects they are doing, and all these things can happen. In this case, we have already formed a committee in sector uh, and uh, we have already con contacted HEC and given our recommendations to HEC that how it can be done. Next one. <coughs> this is the administrative uh, part. I said many committees should be formed and they should be uh, implementing that uh, technical matters. Can I have the next one? So as we know that science and technology is very important. We cannot stop actually the science and technology. We will be helping the science and technology community to do the work. But how they should be some procedures and how they can do it. Second, we have to prevent the misconduct in, uh, in the, uh, because all the science and technology can be a, of dual use. So we are in, uh, just stopping the dual use usage in research. Scientific, next one, back. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to form the ethical and ethical committees and code of conduct, uh, code of conduct and code of ethics in every university. Introduction of internal structure of safety and ethics in individual environment and experimental and research organizations. Next one. The objective will be that, if, that there should be a guidelines, written guidelines, and uh, we should be drawing our code of conduct from the uh, international code of conduct, uh, and we should be introducing them, them in the national universities and making them liable that every research should go through that. Next one. So we can also see the publications and the material of publications uh, that what they are making and how the working is going on. Next one. This will be very helpful in biodefense system. 
Elements of code of conduct. What should be the element? Control of research funding can be done very easily if we have these laws in the university. Link funds with awareness. So we should develop the awareness in our scientific community. Why I am saying that? Because when we have to implement the laws, our scientific community should be able to con implement those laws. So we have to inbuild that. Next one. Now, the first part, I was, I was dis discussing the manpower and technical know-how, how it can be developed. The second part is, we are not going to stop uh, the activities. The right of a member state is there to engage in the development and application of chemistry for the purpose of prohibited under the convention, which includes industrial, agriculture, research, medical, pharmaceutical, and other peaceful uses. So what we are doing, we are inculcating the sense of responsibility. But we are not stopping the research. We are not stopping the advancement of the science and technology. So I have to make some recommendations for that, how we can do that. So they are, here are my some recommendations that we should maintain the shipment interactive with UN legislation 1540. It is the internal control of the state and non-state actors to control emergence of the chemical weapons and proliferation of chemical weapons. Third, cargo monitoring is to be made has already been discussed and I like to mention that we should be using, using modern methods of uh, technology, maybe a mobile unit, maybe at, at, the, at the entrance points. I have already floated a project in this direction and uh, SACDEV has been uh, helping me. Inspection of industry, maintenance of inventory of dual-use chemicals should be made modern and effective. Third, academia introduce responsible chemistry courses in colleges and universities. An outreach project has already been prepared as state uh, party to CWC and SACDEV has given some recommendations to the HEC for implementation of that. I am a, par a part of that project. Code of conduct and code of ethics should be made and implemented at all levels. I can give you a reference that in American universities, they have already made a code of conduct and uh, code of ethics, and there are nearly about 6,000 code of conduct and code of ethics, because every university has their own code of conduct and ethics. Capacity. Now, the very important thing is the capacity building. What I am talking about is really the capacity building uh, and should be done in to use innovative technologies. Help should be taken by, as already been mentioned uh, by Ambassador Usman Heather, by the Australian group and Vezenab arrangement for Training, uh, training purposes and at last I will suggest one thing that we should have uh, organization like OPCW in Pakistan to regulate all these things and we should have an advisory group uh, on different aspects of CWC meeting the challenge, upcoming challenges. Thank you so much. I hope I have finished this. Uh, there is a 